Next to face the dragons is entrepreneur and mother of two, Colleen Wong from London, with a business creation that's close to her heart. This is my third baby, and so it's something I'm really proud of. Being a mom and running a startup, the two go hand in hand. It's a multitasking and having no sleep. Hello, dragons. My name is Colleen Wong, and I'm the founder of Tech64. It was about 18 months ago, I took my two little kids to a farm park, and I witnessed a mum running around looking everywhere for her son. So I thought to myself, oh my goodness, that could have been me. And why are we not more connected to our younger children? My solution is the Gator Watch. It's this watch here, so it looks like a watch, but it actually makes and receives calls from up to 10 trusted numbers. It's also a tracker. It has no access to the internet, social media, or games. Last year, in the fall, I began to work with a technology distributor, and my Gator Watch is now sold at Bentles in Kingston, on Amazon, and John Lewis Online. The watch retails for £99, and there's also a service plan with it. It's £9 a month on an annual contract, or £11 a month without a contract. Today, I'm looking for £100,000 of investment for 5% of my business. I'd like to give you all a, a Gator watch, if that's all right, to take a look at. Hoping her product has the bite to snare a dragon is Colleen Wong. Thank you. She's seeking £100,000 for 5% of her children's watch, phone and tracker. Retail expert Tuka Suleiman is first to explore what makes the business tick. When did you get the idea and how did you execute the samples? So I had the idea in September of 2015 and I knew that it would cost an extreme amount of money to design a product from scratch. And so I picked one manufacturer in China and I began working with them. A two million pound evaluation on it? Yes. I'm assuming you have some IP or something very unique to create such a valuation. Because I had gone to a manufacturer who had manufactured this product, right. okay, they own the IP. Right, you don't own the IP? Not for this, no. After speaking to IP lawyers, I realized that once a product is already out in the marketplace, you can no longer obtain the IP for it. This was a product, so for example, wearable GPS tracker, that's also a phone, was already in the market. And you've sold how many so far in total? 400. 400. over 400. At 99 pounds? So, cost how much? So it costs $55, so it works out to be about just under 50 pounds. Already, there's a problem. If your cost is 50, and you're retailing at 99, another retailer would want to pay 37, 38, 40 for it. So already, you can't wholesale it. It's a shaky start for Colleen, as Tuka Suleiman exposes the limitations of her sales model. But dad of two, Tej Lalvani, is more interested in how smart the child-friendly watch is. Is it waterproof? It's could... flashproof. So a kid can't use it in a swimming pool? No. Okay. But he, they so a can... bit of rain, rain, rain will protect it. Yeah. And can it receive text messages? No. So when you said that there's a data plan on it, what's the data plan for? It's for GPS tracking and Wi-Fi tracking. So you can't send a message to your kid if you want them to read it? No. You've made a fatal error walking into this den with a £2 million valuation. I think not only does it say a lot about the company, but it says a lot about you. And that makes me unsure about you as a person to invest in. A bitter blow for Colleen as Tej Lalvani hands out a damning assessment of her company price tag. A subject that's also rendered Deborah Meaden a little dumbfounded. I'm a bit stunned by the two million pound valuation. Peter, can I ask you, how long would it take me to find somebody to just go and buy these and do the same sort of deal? 
By the end of tomorrow? By the end of tomorrow. So there's no barrier to entry? No. If I could explain the reason for my two million valuation. So I work closely with my distributor and we've worked together to determine what our forecasts are for sales up till the end of the year. Uh, but I'm gonna have to stop you here. Uh, so I'm really, I am honestly, genuinely stunned. You are forecasting in markets that I can get into just like that. Peter's telling me I could get this product by end of play tomorrow. It's actually a bit of a cheeky valuation. Valuations are a combination of either track record, barriers to entry, you can do something much faster than I could possibly ever do it, IP that says you can't even enter this market without me. Which bit of that have you got? While I've been working with my manufacturer in China, and he's seeing that the brand is growing here in the UK, we've come to an agreement that we are going to join together and jointly own the IP. Sorry, the brand is growing. You've sold 400 watches, but you value your business at two million pounds, which is, I'm getting more annoyed as I even say it. Deborah Meaden takes exception to the company's seven-figure valuation. Now, Jenny Campbell wants to know how vital Colleen is to the business setup. Can I just understand, you've got the manufacturer in China owns the IP. Why do they need you? What do you add to that? Because um, the manufacturer doesn't speak English. And you speak Chinese? I speak fluent Chinese, yes. OK, all right. So you're a linchpin in terms of making that happen. Yes. OK, there's a little USP. But it is replicable, obviously. Of course. You talked about jointly sharing the IP with the Chinese manufacturer. Well, I worked with them to improve the design, to improve the app. And so I do have a letter of intent from the Chinese manufacturer. OK. Could there be traction in the pitch after all, as Jenny Campbell uncovers the entrepreneur's evolving relationship with her partners? Time for tech giant Peter Jones to reveal whether there's a place for the gadget in his business empire. I don't really know what more to say, because it's the first time I think this has happened in the den. I don't know whether you realise, but you have actually nothing. Literally nothing. There's over 120 different products of this variant. My offices in Hong Kong have over 30 of these types of products. What you've done is you've taken a manufacturer, you've arranged to have agreement that you can sell their product. You've become now a glorified sales agent and then you've introduced a distributor into the margin chain. If that's the case, but it's a winning situation for myself as well to be able to test that this product does sell, is that wrong? No, no, it's great for you because you've got a job. But you haven't got a business. I don't feel like I'm a glorified sales agent. You know, the relationships that I've built with the manufacturer and with their willingness to want to work together with me in the future. In the future, but you're asking for investment today in a business which doesn't exist. You're asking for us to value your sales skills at two million pounds. That's why I'm saying I'm out. Peter Jones imparts his devastating verdict on the entrepreneur's business opportunity. And more bad news is on its way as Deborah Meaden revisits that thorny issue of how much Colleen thinks her company's worth. You're so off the scale on your valuation that it, it, it's, it is a bit worrying about how you're going to run the rest of the business. OK. Another part of the valuation that I've been, um, you know, told to look at are similar companies and their valuations. So a company by the name of Tinitel. Yeah. They do a wearable mobile phone and tracker as well. Yeah. And three years ago, at prototype stage, they were valued at $6 million. Yeah. Did they own any IP? 
Yes, they did. Yeah. Were they first to market? They were one of the first to market, yes. Tick. That's my point. Yes, I totally understand that. And that is why I need to join together with the manufacturer and work together and jointly own the IP. Yeah, but that's not what you're doing here today. You're telling me you're worth two million pounds. You even knocked a naught off the end of that. It still wouldn't be worth it, so I'm really sorry. I won't be investing. I'm out. Despite the entrepreneur's valiant effort to justify her valuation, Deborah Meaden is the second dragon to reject the deal. But will the pendulum swing Colleen's way, as a previously positive Jenny Campbell is next to declare her hand? You're very, very competent and presentable and determined. You may have a business from this in the future, but it's all future but it's not an investment at this stage. So for that reason, I wish you good luck, but I'm out. I think you need to be very, very careful because even as a sales agent, if you don't sign that joint venture agreement with your supplier, he could very easily go straight to the distributor and say, well, we don't need Colleen. Unfortunately, I don't think it's investable, so I'm out. Four dragons down. Now, only Tuka Suleiman can turn the struggling entrepreneur's fortunes around. I think you've got a long way to go. I honestly believe, go away, look at the watch. What else can you add to it that is unique, that you could then have an IP to, and then you might have a company worth a few hundred thousand pounds, but definitely not two million. There's no way I'm going to invest. I'm out. Thank you. Time's up for Colleen, and she leaves the den empty-handed, scuppered by her company's price tag. That's the trouble with crazy valuations. Two million. Crazy. Wow. I didn't come up with a valuation out of thin air. You know, it had a lot of research behind it. In regards to Peter Jones's comments, you have to start somewhere. I am building a business. 